Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our panel discussion today on fostering corporate strategies for an era of shared humanity. My name is Amanda Cooper. I'm the editor of the markets and investing teams at uh, Insider here in the UK. I'm very thrilled to be welcoming um, some of our panel are here. I think some of our panel might be experiencing some technical difficulties. So please bear with us while uh, people join. I'm sure we'll have some more participants. But in the meantime, I'd like to introduce uh, Shireen Chalet, who is Managing Director of the Center for Engineering and planning in Palestine. And um, Shireen has led technical teams of national and international experts in strategic planning and infrastructure development for both rural and urban communities. Please welcome to Zorab Ashville, who is the founder and CEO of Lycos, which is a blockchain-based operating system and obviously at the center of a lot of the technological transformation of what we're seeing in the world today. I'd like to say thank you to all of you that have joined us to uh, to watch the panel today. Please feel free to give us a like, wave, post questions or comments or thoughts. We're very happy to tackle anything that's on your minds. So without further ado, um, uh, I thought that I'd sort of just kick off with a, you know, this is such a broad subject. I thought I would like to kick off with um, some thoughts from um, Sadia Zahidi, the Managing Director of the World Economic Forum, who recently said there can be no economic recovery without a social one. Um, Zurab, your your company operates sort of, you know, what you do is sort of all, all kind of covers everything. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, we are a proponent of the digital economy, right? And so we are creating the digital economy and uh, we are saying that the human environment should be the, the least because uh, that carries a lot of overhead, right? You know, so, you know, and uh, it shows on the bottom lines of the companies, right? Uh, but uh, obviously, the social, without social interaction, there's going to be um, no certain clear drive for the innovation, certain clear understanding of what um, humanity really wants because you know as as much as i appreciate this uh this panel and as much as i appreciate uh, this gathering um i think it's a little bit um, um you know it's a, if i if i gave it a a, a quantifying type of a uh, number to to the value that i'm getting out of it it's probably a half what i could what i got when um, i was present in Portugal at the same, um, you know, the panel or, 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 or a gathering two years ago. Right. You know, so, um, that, that, that's, that said, um, uh, it's, it's important that people, we are social beings and you know, we meet each other and we, um, talk to each other in, in the presence of each other and not not having this third party, which is a technology, which is an amazing thing, uh, be our moderator. Oh, that's a, a very interesting thought to kick us off with. Thank you. Um, just uh, as a brief aside, I can see that one of our participants, um, Anthony Venus, who's founder and CEO of Yepe, has joined us in the audience. Um, Anthony, I think you've requested the mic. Would you like to just say hi and introduce yourself? I finally made it in. Sorry. Even better. You're with finally us. Thank, you, uh, so thank you so much. Nice to, nice thank to see you. you thank so you so much. Great to see you. OK, so as, as you heard, we kicked off with a, you know, a question about, uh, you know, how there can be no economic recovery without a social one. Um, and certainly, as Zura mentioned, this sort of technology, which is sort of forming this this third party in, in, in what we do is, you know, obviously a a stopgap. And as we kind of move to more normal life, hopefully it will take a bit more of a, perhaps a, a, a backseat as it were. Um, now, COVID-19 has done a lot of things, but it's certainly exposed the kind of, um, you know, social inequity uh, across the world, whether that's sort of accessibility to vaccines or economic recovery and so on. Um, and, uh, you know, so of looking at, at, you know, what recovery might look like and what you know, corporate strategies might look like to um, address these issues, I think probably perhaps one of the biggest questions, you know, for the corporate world today. So, you know, Anthony, as a as, a, as an entrepreneur and, uh, you know, startup founder, someone who's uh, constantly been adapting to changes in the world, how are you, um, how are you approaching this? How do you, um, how do we do it? 
I mean, it's an interesting question. I guess, um, look, for all the, the horrible things about COVID, there's been some benefits too. I think that it forced people in forced isolation in a little bit of anxiety for everyone, if you like, and just being able to stand still for a bit, actually reevaluate and reassess what kind of companies we want to be in the future. I think a lot of companies are still trying to work this out. What does the future of work kind of look like? Is it virtual? Is it in person? What's the mix and so forth? But what I've also noticed is that, you know, on the other themes I think I've heard in the conference today about sustainability, I actually think I've noticed um, not just from our own management, but from our employees, it's also, well, it's shone a light on the entire climate problem. Um, I think it's actually had some benefit for that where, where people actually had to really sit down and think about what was important in life. And now what we're seeing from our employees, we're seeing, you know, hold, hold on, boss, we've got to do something about this. Let's, let's make some changes. So um, I actually think it's going to lead to a new way of doing business. Um, now, if you're a startup, you have perhaps some advantage of being able to shape things a lot easier, perhaps in some larger corporations, uh, that'll take them some more time. But I do think there's some good that's come out of all of this. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's, um, I, I'd certainly agree with that. And it's, and it feels like, uh, you know, when talking about recovery and, and how do we do, how do we work in the future? How do we do business? Yeah. It feels like that aside from sort of a lot of the social inequity that the pandemic has uncovered, that it's really exposed the kind of the urgency of the, of the climate debate and of sustainability and improving efficiencies yeah. and so on. Um, Shireen, if I can, if I can move to you, please, when we were chatting earlier, you know, you, you sort of were talking about how, you know, yes, the, you know, the pandemic has been this global crisis, but where you are in particular in Palestine, overcoming what seem to be huge obstacles and crises is almost part of your daily life. Um, you know, and you in, and in your field, you know, you're working very much on the ground in like urban development, rural development, sustainability and so on. What's your take on this? You know, how what what sort of scope, you know, where do you see biggest um biggest room for improvement, like where we can do most good? Um, yeah, actually, as, as you just mentioned, uh, living in Palestine itself uh, under occupation is a big challenge. It, it's something that we're dealing on daily basis. We're, we're, we're facing obstacles uh, on daily basis that we need to overcome. And sometimes some urgent thing happened on ground. Sometimes um, uh, soldiers came and kick off uh, uh, <clears throat> the labors from the project, and we have to deal with all these uh, circumstances. So dealing with such day-to-day uh, -day obstacles gave us, like, you know, the ability to overcome problems in a way that we're always on alert. So uh, we're used to such such circumstances, unfortunately. However, for the pandemic itself, it is, you know, it's global. It's different. It's, it's, a, it's a threat uh, on the health. It's something that... Uh, control things all over the world. It's not only Palestine. So it was uh, another challenge that added more complication to our life. So uh, me being um, uh, the director of an engineering company where most of our work should be physically, we, we're doing it through meetings on daily basis. We're doing it through side visits on daily basis. So uh, that was an extremely big challenge, how we can sustain the business under such circumstances when there's closure everywhere, when staff cannot reach the work and all these things. So uh, it's something was uh, extremely challenging. However, uh, we are learning. Yeah, this is the thing that we're always, I think, uh, or we're, we're all uh, uh, share that we're still uh, understand, trying to understand what would be the best combination of handling such situation. And even there are things that we learned through process during this, this uh, experience, this, this period that we will, uh, uh, let's say, adopt for, for, uh, for the future. We were forced to, uh, uh, to, to work from a distance in some subjects, which we will adopt in our system for the future. So we learned a lot through this process. Mm -hmm. However, it was very challenging. Yeah, no, I can. I, 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 I just say I can't imagine, but I, I don't think I can. What? Um, so, so would you say what? What lessons can can Palestine teach the rest of the world in terms of, you know, being quick to adapt, and overcoming obstacles, and and persisting? Actually, I always say that we, as let's say, the the, the people living in Palestine and and being uh, a woman, and uh, let's say to some extent young, all these. 
things give us like you know um, a lot of uh, uh, hope that and, and and I always say we as people have something to to do with uh, persistence. We're always we, we don't give up. Uh, we always have like you know an initiative which we uh, persist to do, and at the end uh, we reach the the result we want. So. Uh, we we don't have something that uh, we really give give up at something that we should do or uh, or let's say um, uh, don't find it useful that we should do it. So as people, uh, we learn how to stay persistent regardless of all the obstacles that we are having. Thank you. Um, to, to go back to your your point on how sustainability has come to the fore as a as a as a as a key part of not just recovery but of that kind of that opportunity to do things differently. Um, you know, where you know, say with the you know, there's there's a lot of talk about how you know it's kind of climate friendly jobs that are going to be at the heart of recovery. That's where you know the resources need to be put and so on. Like for you, where do, where do you feel that 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 catalyst is going to come from? Like for someone like you that runs a company, you've got your own people yeah. coming and saying, "What do we do about this?" Um, would you expect um, you know Would you like to perhaps see more uh, leadership from governments? Does it come from the ground up? Does it come from the corporate world? It's a good question. I actually think it comes from every stakeholder. <laughs> it, it's got to be. Companies, employees, shareholders, governments, the whole lot combined. So, for example, um, we're trying something different. We're experimenting at the moment with a program where, like a lot of companies, you know, we're measuring our carbon emissions. We're putting in place strategies to to reduce our carbon footprint. And for what's left over, of course, we're, we're offsetting that with investing in local environmental projects. But, you know, the question becomes ultimately who funds this. You can get, it, get to a few years before you can actually fund these things sometimes but um, what we've done is we've done a matching program where the company contributes but also the employees contribute by way of a salary sacrifice which is a a nice sort of tax benefit way of doing it Um, so I guess the ultimate question is you know at what balance will customers fund this will employees fund this will companies fund this and so forth does it really matter uh, at the moment probably it doesn't really matter we'll figure that out um, but our objective is, is to become carbon negative within the next 12 months. I also think that these these targets, uh, you know, the, the net zero targets by 2050, um, you know, I, I don't think it takes a genius to work out that you're going to see that goal probably come down to a different year, a much closer in the future. I think it's it's gaining momentum. Um, I think that this whole sustainability movement will be core will be core for business because it's about the survival of the human race. So I think it's going to going to really manifest itself. It's just it's beyond just carbon sort of carbon friendly jobs or sustainable jobs. It's more about actually how corporations period uh, interact with customers, how customers interact with shareholders, and who contributes to this. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're certainly seeing uh, an increase in things like um, shareholder activism and with a lot of focus on accountability. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The whole ESG movement has, has really gone through the roof. I think I, I think it's uh, there's an article in the FT over the weekend saying that already uh, it's doubled in the last year. The number of major corporations uh, who signed up to ESG initiatives, I think it's now 20 or 25 percent. So. When you, when you see the major corporations doing it, you know that um, it's going to be a, a trend right throughout. That's certainly true. I remember reading a statistic towards the end of last year that uh, I think it was research from Oliver Wyman that sort of looked at uh, you know all, all kind of all the trillions of dollars invested in assets um, in the world, and I think it's like one in four dollars is now in a sort of a, an ESG friendly product. So that goes to show that 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 share is only going to increase as we go forward. Um, sticking with the the subject of um, sustainability and then the kind of the accountability that 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 comes with that, one of the things that it, it feels to me a little bit like that that people are looking towards is like the the, the great hope here is towards technology and how that it, how that sort of somehow intertwined with you know the move towards net zero on a number of levels. Um, I think Zureb, you're our, you're our, our kind of our tech addict here. How are you? Um, how does the how does the whole sort of this this push for for you know for net zero by twenty fifty for greater accountability on on kind of not just climate but also social and government governance goals feed into you know what, you know your business and perhaps what your clients are requiring from you? 
Right. I mean, I mean, um, we have to. Um, well, thank you very much. I mean, this is a great subject and a great, great question. The thing is that um, I think we have to look at uh, at this uh, from uh, almost like an anecdotal statement, right? You know. So I, I'll tell you a little story, right? You know. So when I moved to United States, uh, I, I saw this this new and upcoming company, uh, you know, rising up, you know, and uh, it was like zero zero calorie yogurt company, right? So they would. Basically, everybody that, that cared about uh, the calorie intake, they, they would go and buy this yogurt. But, you know, the toppings, see, the yogurt was zero calories, but the toppings were probably like 10,000 calories, right? You know, so, so that's the thing. So now it's the toppings that, you know, we should be talking about and not the substance, right? You know, we can, we can commit ourselves to the net zero, to minus, you know, to, 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 the, to the negative carbon footprint, but... Then comes this big whale. It's called the government, and it's called the. <clears throat> and then you know what? You have to file. So you filing every time I hear a file, uh, and unless it's like you know some kind of digital form, I see a tree dying. Right. So what is the what is the carbon footprint by by, by killing a tree? Right. You know. So then when you're dealing like you know doesn't matter. I mean you know you have this like uh, the this new movements that every, all the money in the world is going to like DeFi, which is decentralized finance. You know, all the money is in the world is going into, um, you know, like a, the, the direct tech and all the other techs. But, you know, at the end of the day, then you have this like, you know, old system called the regulatory kind of oversight, right? You know, FCA, SECs, and, you know, like FDAs and all the other different types of regulatory elements of the world in any <laughs> any region right it doesn't have to be just the uh, uk or england or you know you have regulators everywhere now they are as bad as the dinosaurs or as far as the technology uh, appreciation and understanding it so unless they're gonna come in and and get online then we're gonna have the similar type of approach where we're trying to be like a zero calorie yogurt but they all the other things, the toppings, obviously, they, they contribute to the to the most. Right? That's that's my five cents to that uh, question. So, I mean, I know that, that that generally speaking, most people aren't hugely keen on regulators. Um, <laughs> are they? Are they at the moment? Are they kind of the, the biggest barrier to that that transition to uh, you know that that having that accountability and meeting your sustainability goals in that case? Well. I, I think um, the, the the question is that you, you see, like you know, in a digital world, like you know, what we are creating. When you write a code, if you're a programmer and you write a code, there is a basically checksum, or you know, you check the code, and there is a, like a quality assurance and all the other things. Have you heard about the regulatory regulator taking the the law that they're going to come out, or or compliance type of a rule that they're going to come out, and they are checking that against what they are breaking by their introducing this law, right? You know, so the, it, it's basically, it's imagine like this is the, the things that pile up on top and it's, it's, it's this uh, amazing, some kind of a, a ball that you cannot untangle with the, with this, with the lot of strings attached. So what, what we are trying to do, the challenge is that how you're going to take the qualitative type of approaches that regulators sometimes take and you quantify that into the, into the realm of technology so you bring some kind of a digital solution. That is the question. Now, uh, and without that type of a transformation, without them hiring right people, like, you know, sometimes like we see who regulators hire, it's all about human resources. Like, you know, we all forget that, you know, the most important subject line is people people create companies people create governments people create the world so we the people you know should be not just a saying in the united states constitution that starts with but you know we have to implement that as well so that's the that is the sustainability otherwise you know the in in theory everything is written right but in 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 execution of that theory in implementation of the theory there is a huge gap uh, which is a human factor, which is like many, many other things. So uh, it's just impossible to 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 take the, the, the step forward without a, a regulations and and governments 
being more friendly to the business and to the innovations. And then this is that I think that will that will be a breakthrough where you can you can have like one day you know like with all due respect you know I'm, we are very apolitical we are a company but you know one day the the policymaker says coal is good and another day another policymaker says coal is bad so now go figure right you know see like we are we are almost a, a subject to whatever the policies are right uh, so. As good as we want to be, maybe we are the best people in the world with the like a good faith type of a uh, innovative type of approach. Uh, but you know the, the, those those laws that are created in 1930s and then some some laws are in 1800s. They don't they don't really uh, apply to 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 the to today's point of view and today's uh, reality. And then you know it's like everybody has to have a reality check. Yeah, very true. Just to just to pull on that 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 thread for a minute uh, that, that that you mentioned, Zara, about how policy will sometimes shift with a change in government. Shireen, for someone like you, who you know your your work is, you say, very on the ground, very hands on, very practical. How do you cope with that? Those sort of shifts in this one. This government says coal is good, and it's uh, if it's clean coal, you can burn it. And this one says no, it's bad. Or buy a diesel car; it's cheap, and the emissions aren't so bad. Wait a minute, hold the thought. Not so much the case. How do you manage that? Actually, to be honest, it's not um, it's not a substantial issue here. We're living in the third world, you know that. So it's it's not really that that subject that government is looking for. We're we're actually to some extent. To be honest, we're we're independent regarding uh, sustainability, trying to sustain our businesses, to support ourselves. We're like, you know, we're depending on individual performance than really the support or even the regulation from the government. For sure, there are regulations related to environmental basic things, you know, related to environmental. And you can mind that we don't have that much, let's say, advanced industries where, let's say, emissions and these things is, su- is substantial thing. However, we we have like regulations that we have to follow, but it's not changing in a way that really complicates our work or our uh, our performance. What complicates our performance is actually in a situation like our. Oh, I think Shireen, I think you might have frozen. Well, yeah, the, the, I guess it's the, they have different type of needs and demands because this is this is like a basic infrastructure needs and demands. I mean, hence her losing the internet connection, right? You know, so there are certain uh, you know liberties that we take as 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 given uh, to us, but um, some of the parts of the world don't have that luxury. Right? I think I lost all of you. Then you're back. Sorry, I I missed yeah. the comment. Yeah, as you mentioned, we have basic. Uh, uh, we have basic demands and basic, let's say, needs uh, that we need. And actually, we, to some extent, we we like, you know, living on emergency basis. The problem that we don't have, like, you know, a long term plan as much as an, a response on immediate immediate needs. And this is what make us like, you know, we're not developing in a way uh, that we're like, you know, um, planning and uh, uh, constructing work in a way that we will be ready f- uh, for uh, responding to our communities in the coming 10 years. No, we're responding to the immediate needs that we're having day to day from the people uh, in order to respond to people demands on ground due to different uh, uh, factors, not only that we're living in in third uh, uh, world, which is also related to the living under occupation and the restrictions that we have from the Israeli side regarding uh, access uh, limitation on resources, even the main ones like water and all other things. So sometimes you plan to do a project that it is very, uh, let's say it's very urgent for the community, but yet the Israeli side do not accept it. So we have these that much complications that we really don't have. Uh, the, the, let's say the, uh, the, the, the the let's say the luxury to look on other factors. Unfortunately, we're we're at people really care a lot about things related to climate change, care a lot about things related to environment. But the conditions around us doesn't really uh, allow us to handle this in the right way. I no, thank you for that. I was, going to, I was going to say that I think you, you know, what you're saying about, you know, being based in a in a developing nation, it brings us very much back to the subject of this panel, which is 
fostering corporate strategies for an era of shared humanity where there is, uh, you know, where there is that kind of collective approach to problem solving and so on. I couldn't possibly volunteer any thoughts on what the solution might be for your region. Um, but um, but it, it feels to me like like, yes, this is very much the, the, the crux of the issue. Anthony, I think you look like you had some thoughts on uh, what Shereen was saying. You know, uh, I've got some sort of general thoughts about um, just taking it from also the consumer angle for a bit as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, going back to, uh, and there's a little bit away, but back to the whole, um, I've been thinking about it, the, the yogurt comment before it was made. Now, of course, consumer education has improved since then. And now we all know that that little bit of jam on top of the yogurt has lots of calories. Now, I wonder how far along the path we are in every society about sustainability education. Because we also talked before about, you know, every, every paper we feel bad about, you know, it's a tree and so forth. But however, there was a comment made in a previous session, I think it was by David Rothschild, about that every Facebook post was equivalent to burning a light bulb for three hours. Um, I also, we also did some work in the company yesterday that every computer that we bought was 20,000 litres of water and 600 kilograms of raw materials. And the list goes on and on and on, uh, including, by the way, it's going to make us all feel a bit bad. Um, we've now got, in the, we've now realized in the company actually putting the video on. Uh, it, we looked at ways we could be more sustainable and save on energy and save on, on bandwidth and so forth. It's, there's lots of things that we've become used to as a society. And I'm, and I'm one of these, I'm a tech entrepreneur. So I've, I've been contributing to this as well, sort of unknowingly thinking great sustainable industry. However, it's not that simple. There's lots of education that we need to do, whatever society you're in, whether it's the third world or the advanced world or whatever. If we don't change that, um, things aren't going to change. Yeah, it, it does certainly feel like education is at the center of most issues and yeah. that getting that across to people at sort of grassroots levels will help, help you know, yeah. help that, that, that uh, thrive and proliferate. Um, so looking, uh, looking ahead, I see we've, we've got about sort of 10, 15 minutes left of our panel. I just wanted to say thank you to anybody that's following us. If you, if you know, do feel free to press a little emoji or if you'd like to ask any of our panelists a question or have any, any thoughts on what we've been discussing so far, please feel free to post the messages in the chat room and we'll read them out and do our absolute best to address them. Um, I think so going in, going, looking at this, this, the, you know, the idea of sort of education and, um, you know, we're sort of, you know, the part of what we were going to, you know, we're addressing today is, is resetting corporate strategies, um, so that we can achieve profitability and global public betterment. Now that seems like quite a lofty goal. How do we go about doing that? Turab, any, got any thoughts? Well, it's, uh, <clears throat> That that is that is a goal for the future, right? You know, so it's 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 a it's like a destination, right? You know, it's like Google Maps. So you have a destination from point A to point B. So our point B is like sustainability, you know, that the uh, all the greatness and all the other you know superlatives that we can we can pull together, right? The thing is that the question is that how do you go there? What is the road road map? What is the turns that we take? What is the road that we take? What is the toll we pay? And how fast do we get there? You know, so that is the that is the real question and the real answer. And um, I guess um, uh, I guess uh, everybody has their own maps, right? And uh, every company feels uh, that some may pay the toll and get there faster. Some may just break the rules and get there faster. Some may just just follow the rules, not pay the tolls, and you know, get there more in more. Uh, so to speak, optimal way, and some just may create a new road. I mean, I think there's so a, there's there a is no universal answer to this. Yeah. No, I think you're right. It's a say. It's a it's a it's a big question with no one no one answer. It, it does feel that that you know the world is looking towards uh, you know the kind of the tech innovators for answers in this this area. Um, you know, so I think I've got to I turn to well, I'd zero up or, or Anthony, as this is sort of your your area. You know, what what for you is sort of the what for you is like, like kind of the biggest challenge in like your field that you would like to be able to solve as we as we 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 take this path towards you know sort of greater sustainability and so on. 
I, I'll go ahead. I, I think it's um, carbon accounting and measurement is actually, when it, turns, when it turns out, when you dig into it, it's actually pretty hard stuff. Um, it's very manual. Uh, we, we're going through it right now. I'd like to see it far more automatic. Um, I'd love companies to, to be able to plug in and to do this and individuals to be able to plug in and to see where they're at far more easily uh, in order to make the the, um, the actions that they need to make. That's number one. Number two, uh, when it comes to the planning process, you know, we're about to kick off our, our planning process again in September. Uh, instead of having just the financial and the customer metrics up there, I'd like to have uh, the other metrics out there that we're tracking towards, into, including tracking towards being carbon negative and more sustainable practices. So I think we've heard about the triple bottom line for many years. Some people were really taking it up and it was on the fringe sort of, but now it's coming back to the center. And I think you're going to see uh, a lot more B corporations out there. You're going to see the, that's going to be just accelerating. So I think it comes down back to the company charter in the beginning. Uh, can you get your shareholders, your board of directors to agree that the company exists for more than just profit for the shareholders and more than just launching a great new product, that it exists for all? It exists for, certainly for that, that's that's incredibly important, but it also exists for society, uh, societal benefits as well as, as employee benefits and so forth, and that we're here to not just, um, I guess, not just, uh, it's no longer about just preparing. It's about paying it forward because the damage is is really acute already. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's um, I think that kind of goes back to what Zero was saying about like ultimate need. People make up the world. People are the ones that are sort of the backbone of all of this. So, you know, could you volunteer an answer to your own question? You know, is it possible to persuade corporates that, you know, they have a role, they have a duty of care, not just to their shareholders and their boards of directors and so on, but also to not just the people that work for them, but the the, the people in the industries that they service? You think companies are more open to that these days? I, to that kind of concept? I think we've hit an inflection point. I really do. Um, I think that just from what we, we spoke of earlier in terms of what's happened with COVID the last few years, the pause that that's given us, uh, the fact that the climate emergency is just getting worse and worse and worse. These these ecological disasters are not a fluke. Uh, you know, it wasn't just what happened in Australia in 2019. We see that all over the world, all the time. And it's the employees uh, that are, that are going to rally behind this as well. And if, if corporations don't do something, then the best talent will move to the ones that do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose including that's, that's the, including the investors that you pointed out before. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, we're certainly seeing that rise of of investor activism, and and like the example of that little that little hedge fund that suddenly got a seat on the board of, of Exxon and said, "No, what you're doing isn't good enough, and we're going to hold you accountable." Yeah. Um, so, Rob, you're you know you're deeply you know obviously your your you know the, your your company is a sort of a blockchain based business. You know, as I say, it's a word that's been bandied around for years as the answer to lots of different things. Um, what uh, uh, what kind of how do you how do you see um, that sort of digitalization, that sort of you know the uh, blockchain technology and so on? What's what's the biggest difference do you think it can make in the sort of the the short term? I know you mentioned earlier sort of you know this the, the issue of regulators, for example, you file papers, you kill a tree, and so on. What's what's the the, the biggest transformation that you would hope that it will make? Sorry, it's a full question. Well, uh, that is the goal. Right? Um, it's a, it's a challenge. I mean, this is a, this is a, I, I, you asked a question that carries like a future 60 years roadmap, right? Uh, so I used to work for a company uh, called SoftBank and uh, our founder, Masayoshi San, he had a, it, uh, still has 300 year plan. Now our company, Legos, is, is very small and uh, uh, comparing to SoftBank is this <laughs> very, a dot on the map. Uh, but we have a, we have a, pretty much a, a, a 80 year plan. So it's like a 2200, right? So this is, this is like really, um, how do we get there? And uh, what do we do? How do we change the world? And um, it is that we invented the technology of the future. Now it's delivering the communications on a daily basis, 2021, like June 8th and June 9th and uh, meeting a lot of people uh, in different sectors, uh, digitalizing the sectors is changing. Um, basically, everybody everybody thinks that we are digital enough. Actually, we are not because we have 
too much overhead, which is um, the trust that brings a huge overhead. And, you know, this is the um, no, no, no attorney is going to like what I'm going to say right now. But, you know, trust is very overrated right now, given the technology that we have. Um, so you can basically automate and, and take out the trust from the equation. And that will probably uh, free up another 20% of the cost of goods or cost of services that is provided. Um, same way that uh, by having a, a government also uh, enabling their ability of signing into the to the technology, you know, the, the, the major points are the taxes, uh, regulations, things like that nature. So, I mean, you know, it's, we are going and moving towards transparency, but in reality, we are adding more and more and more holes and loopholes just to take out the transparency and take it an unattainable goal. So when you have a technology, you don't have to worry about the calculator in, in your iPhone or whatever the device that you're using, that it's going to give you a mistake. What you worry about is that when somebody else calculated it and it needs an auditor, it needs like, you know, triple, four checks, you know, think about how many repetitive moves that we do, right? You know, let's start from the people, right? People are the most important resources, right? And then time is the most important resource because we, we all know that we're going to die. All of us are going to die. But not, none of us know how much time we have on this earth. So we are, trying to, we are trying to be concise. We are trying to be to the point and not waste our time because time is the most important resource. Now, people are most important resource, right? So think about this. We all know this. That there is this regulation called KYC. Right now, it doesn't matter where you go, right? You know, so you have to prove that you're not a giraffe, that you are who you are, right? You know, so but the, at the end of the day, we are worshiping piece of paper that is printed. It's like a or or a plastic, which is a, a, a form of ID. But nobody really cares about the human being anymore. Right. So there are so many IDs out there. Right. You know, let's start from identification first. Right. You know, let's start from identifying ourselves and who we are dealing with. Right. Because we are human beings and we like to know who we are dealing with. Because when we meet each other, we say, what's your name? We say, what do you do? You know, we are curious, curious beings by, by nature. So all this technology and right now, think about it, 2020. And to do some kind of a action, you have to prove, certify the document that you already have yeah. by a third party. Okay, so I mean, you know, look at, I mean, this looks, seems ridiculous. Why should I certify anything? I have a US passport, I'm a US citizen. So if I bring you the passport, why do you need the third party certificate? Because they try to. Anybody, I mean, you know, look, the regulator put the bug down to the corporation. So we are liable for the KYC, AML. What do we know? Like if, if you ask somebody what is AML, there is just the paper, but there is no real, because everybody has their own risk model, right? You know, so, so one company that you may deal with or, uh, may have a different type of risk um, appetite and another one can have another different, different type of risk appetite. Then if you Google right now, like all this big world, everybody's been fined every year for AML regulatory type of things. So there is no simple rule that says this you cannot do and this you can do. So there is a rule that says we don't know what it is, but it is there. Okay, so what 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 do you create? You create you create environment for bribery. You create environment for any kind of a bad word and adjective that we're gonna find right now. This is what we create, and the regulators and the policymakers are responsible for our future because that we cannot do anything else. So basically, for me to open up a bank account right now. Uh, or anybody to open up a bank account. When you go to a bank, they treat you like you're already a perpetrator. This is how the, 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 the try to open. I mean, go to a bank, open up a walk into the uh, a branch of Barclays, and and try to open up a bank account. This is how they treat a, a customer because they they now depending on what branch you go, this is how they inter, everybody interprets this regulation. <laughs> 
mm-hmm. right? One branch may ask you one set of the documents and another branch, same bank, may not ask you for the sa- that sa- sa- set of documents. So yeah. it's not like, um, you know, like uh, this is this is completely ridiculous. So these are the things that we are wasting our time on. These are the things that we are creating. This is like just the, you know, human interaction goes to, you cannot hire a, a solicitor, a lawyer, without going to K- KYC and AML. Hmm. You yeah. cannot, you can, I mean, oh, but you know, cab driver doesn't ask you who you are. Yeah, I think like you're saying, what you're saying, the, the, the issue of trust and that being sort of, uh, how that's kind of in a way removed from the equation is is very interesting. I mean, it's a little bit of the irony of accessing something on the internet and me having to tell a Google robot that I'm not a robot. Um, I wanted to go, I love the comment that you made. About, we're, we're coming to the end of our session. I love the comment that you made about people are the most important thing and time is the most important thing. And I think so, Shireen, for you, for someone who works in a very different environment to us, who has very different challenges and considerations, I, I imagine that resonated with you somewhat. Yeah, actually, I want just to, um, to emphasize on the point that people and time are really the most important factors, even in, in our work. For me, my assets as a company, as an owner of the company, as even as, a, as a, the one who's running the business, is my people. It's not only the co- my colleagues who's working with me in the, the company. It's also their families. And it's also the people that we are doing projects for them because we are impacting their quality of life. When we do infrastructure projects, roads, water, sewage, all these things, we're trying to, Im- to enhancing their uh, quality of life. So people is the main asset for us. And we're, we're really, uh, we're always looking on sustainability to sustain our business in order to be able to sustain other people lives. So it's not about ourselves as much as our the people that we are impacting. And time is a big, a big factor in, in this process. Yeah, no, I love <laughs> the, the idea of humanity. Zurab, you have to go. Yes. Thank you so much for joining Thank us this you. morning. Very Thank nice you. to meet you, all of you. Thank you. Likewise, it's a pleasure. Um, Anthony, as we wrap up, any final thoughts from you that you'd like to share? Oh, I think you might be on mute. Uh, you'd think I'd run a technology company, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, completely agree with I completely agree with the people aspect as well. That's that's what it's all about. Um, and uh, but thank you so much for today. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Really, really inspiring and really thought provoking. And thank Thank you to everybody that's joined us to listen in. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.